Now, of course, there are examples of that guy who sits down, writes a script, somewhat effortlessly, a couple pages here, a couple pages there, finally gets to the end, sends it out, it gets sold, it gets made, he's a big star. Happens occasionally. And by the way, good for them. I'm jealous, right? But for most people, it doesn't quite work that way. And so you really have to be very, very serious about the way you approach it. I have been sent hundreds of scripts from wannabe writers over the years, and not one good one has ever landed on my desk. Go back, get better. Learn the craft, learn the craft, learn the craft. People come to this business oftentimes for the wrong reasons. They come to this business often because they see the, what they perceive to be fame or adulation or recognition or, or, or money bestowed upon folks who work in the movie business. And they come from a place of having felt deprived of a certain kind of attention they may have wanted when they were younger or or a need to be recognized. I think most screenwriters weren't the popular kids growing up. And I think they tend to kind of walk into a room with that expectation that they might get punched in the face. If you're not prepared to do a lot of push-ups, don't enlist in the Marines. If you're not prepared to be rejected, don't try to make film or write film or direct film or act in film because you're going to be rejected. They don't want you. The business doesn't want you. There's too many people trying to do what you want to do. They need to weed you out. So they weed you out by making the walls very, very high and very hard to climb. If you look at those experiences um, as an opportunity to get information about what you're working on and, and, and how you're doing it and what your voice is and what you're good at and what you're not good at, um, you know, A, it makes it a much more empowering, positive experience, and B, um, it, it makes sort of the rejection or, or the disappointment um, something you can use. If you want to swap your daydreams for dollars, um, if you want to literally traffic in your own imagination, which is what writers are doing, you, why not expect that that's going to be hard to do? Why imagine that people are just going to come up and make that easy for you and be eager for that? I would tell you right now in Los Angeles, there's probably a quarter million people writing screenplays, about half a million in some form, and 99.999% of them when they say, oh, I'm being rejected, I can't get ahead, it's because the writing isn't good. Young writers send me scripts that are so sloppy and so unthought through and so unpolished that there's nothing to say. It's like this isn't even a first draft. And, you, and this, you think, is ready? You know, and then sometimes I'll send them a, a draft of mine and they go, oh, I get it. Yeah, go back and work for another two years and, and be rigorous. If you get coverage back that says, this is the worst piece of shit I've ever read, this writer has no talent, well, that might be worth listening to if it comes back from a dozen people that way. Uh, and maybe you should think of set design or <laughs> something else. But, um, you know, it, it isn't personal. It's all about what they're looking for at the time. They say it takes 10 years to really start working in Hollywood, and that, that's directly applicable to my career. Um, so, you know, if you've spent 10 years going at it and all you have is heartache and, and, and it's killing you, um, there comes a time when, you know, you, you have to realize, my personality isn't suited for this kind of rejection. I have a couple of friends who I think are excellent writers who've never really been able to get a foothold. And I have no clue why, you know, I mean, I don't know what it is that makes them unable to, but I've read their scripts and like them. And I, no matter how much I recommend them to other people, it just doesn't happen for them. You can read stories about screenwriters and how tough it is. And, you know, you, you hear about the, the screenplay that was rejected by everyone under the sun, except, you know, this one guy, you know, and you only need one. You only need one person to buy it. Just as a screenplay needs to be developed, I think a writer needs to be developed and that it takes a number of failures uh, in order to eventually write something that gets better. Um, it seems like, yeah, I can fill 110 pages and, you know, it's a screenplay, yahoo. Uh, but that's very different from writing something that's going to move somebody, you know, on some level when they, they read it. 
And there are ways to learn. There's, maybe they say, this is a great story, but boy, these characters are so cardboard. Well, think about how you can complicate them and enrich them and make them more interesting so that you not only have a crackerjack story, but a group of characters that you really want to see tell that story. A good idea, well executed, is worth something. The idea in of itself isn't worth that much. I get a lot of questions to the website saying like, oh, I had this really great idea. I just need to find a writer to write it. Um, as if like just the writing it is sort of the easy part. I would like to go back and grab the 25-year-old version of me, or I'm embarrassed to say the 30-year-old version of me, and say just find your own voice. Don't, don't try to duplicate um, the styles of other writers. One of the hardest things that you have to deal with as a screenwriter is uh, objectivity and getting an objective point of view on your material. I remember a script from a UCLA student who said extreme close-up vagina. I swear on my kids. And then it was the birth of a baby from that angle. And when I went to talk to the students, I said, who wrote this? And a lady, a girl, raised her hand. I said, ma'am, do you know how big the screen at the Village Theater in Westwood is? I know, because it was actually built for 2010. It's 75 feet. Do you want to rethink that shot? New writers tend to overwrite and explain everything as, as opposed to hooking people with a mystery. You know, they'll have um, two pages of backstory instead of just the provocative line that makes us want to know more about the character that keeps us as an audience leaning forward and engaged in the storytelling. I intentionally, as, as a younger person, never really developed another skill <laughs> that I could fall back on because I didn't want, I didn't want to fall back on anything. You know, I thought, I, I, I've got to succeed at this uh, if it takes 30, 40 years, you know, and uh, luckily it happened sooner than that. But, you know, I was prepared from a young age to, to stick with it for the long haul. You can write a script a day, every day for your whole life if you're that motivated and there will be a new opportunity with every one of those scripts there's just no failing there's a paucity of new ideas so um, I, I think uh, if, if you have a really wonderful original story people will jump on it try not to think about the thousands hundreds of thousands of you know 120 page screenplays piling up in executive offices Try not to think about the competition. Try not to think that everybody, your mailman and everybody you know, has a screenplay that they want to sell. I'm a 10-year overnight success. So if I'd, if I'd known 10 years before I sort of got to the point where I could make a living even close to the living my friends were making on Wall Street, I would probably have thought more than twice about continuing with it. But no, I, I completely, I knew nothing about how difficult it was. I was invincible at, at 21, 22. So, you know, of course, it was just a matter of time before it happened to me. If you believe in yourself that much, that alone generates things. But if you have a leap of faith that is underpowered, where you're questioning it as you leap, <laughs> you, know, you, know, you don't get to the other side. You can't leap without complete and absolute willingness to die for what you want. Realize that this is impossible but you do it anyway.